All right, what's going on everybody? So we're back at one of my favorite rivers here in um, coastal Maine. Just hooked into probably my smallest salmon to date, which I'll show right here in the corner. Yeah, I could barely tell it was even on until it started jumping, but another cool little catch. You can't beat wild fish. So yeah, gonna get into some more of them. Hopefully get into some wild browns, some wild brookies, and maybe even a few more wild salmon. And so stick around and hopefully you see a few more fish on camera. All right, so. Like I said in the intro, I just caught my smallest ever salmon to date in the fly rod right there. My smallest ever in general too, so. Pool might have just had that one little guy in it, so I'll just give it a couple more casts just to see if anyone's home, and then if not, we'll keep heading downstream and head to some fresh waters. There we go, right on, right on cue. Oh, there he goes. Well, just the way it goes sometimes. Quick release. <laughs> I'll say for those fishing pocket water, if you're doing dry flies, little caddis, little emergers like the one I'm using right now, they are lethal at waters like this. Alright, looks like that may have been it for this pool, so time to move on down. Next little pocket down and let's see if anything's in this little rod right here. Maybe this time, if there is one, I can. Get... Oh, missed him. Saying though, hopefully, if there is one in here, this little run. But I can get him in the net for you on camera and you guys a closer look. There we go. We have here. And we have a little salmon. Over, keep your hands wet and protect your outer slime. This right here is a little wild salmon. You get a quick pick. Get close to the water. And quickly, come right back in. Just like that. Perfect. All right. Let's see if I can pull one more out of here. Maybe get a brookie or a brown. and. Keep heading down. So, um, 50, low 50 degree nights are really starting to take the toll in water temps, so it's good to have the water's cooling down a good bit so the fish are going to be more active and it's finally safe again to fish for them after a pretty, pretty long and warm summer, so. Alright, this doesn't need more gink. It's one pretty convenient thing you can do with dry flies and emergers. You can't really tell now because it's kind of worn down a bit, but stuff called gink, and they have other brands of it as well. It's a bit warm, so it's a little bit more liquidy than it typically would be because it's been in my pocket. But you take that into your fly, work it into the uh, hackle, and it will help it. Uh, keep floating even after a couple of fish strikes typically though usually works better when it's not pretty much li pure liquid <laughs> keep it in your pocket all day so Little hit. There's a few of them in this pool right here, or run rather. And just put them to that stick. Oh, there we go. Thank you. 
Because that time I'm going to put that fly off the stick. I'm not disturb the pool, but oh, there we go, we're good. The good thing about these ones, especially the small ones, when you get some of that high vis stuff on them, it's pretty easy to see the strikes just like that one. Oh, there we go. Oh, very energetic little salmon. Oh, there you go, guys. Beautiful landlock salmon. So, time for quick, quick. Final look, and keep them in the water as long as you can. There he goes. Water's nice and cold too, so. Makes it pretty easy reviving and take off pretty nice as well. All right, mostly some little guys in this pool, but this guy just came right out of nowhere. Looks to be a little salmon. Let's see. All right. Hey, right, everybody. A little salmon. There he goes. I wonder if those smaller ones in the pool are brook trout. They weren't quite jumping like salmon when they'd go after this little merger. So, give it a few more casts and then keep moving down. Okay. Still a few fish in there that want it, but it's getting kind of waterlogged, so I'm going to apply a little bit more gink. Hitting it pretty quickly up here, but for whatever reason, I'm gonna stay on.
It's like instantly strikes, but. There we go. Oh my gosh, look at that. A very little salmon. <laughs> look at that, everybody. Little guy. Probably why the hook sets weren't quite as... Let's get the hook out of him and get him right back in the water. I don't know if they'll do it again, but I just had two huge fish come up with the emerger right here. Oh! Was, oh, and I lost him. There's a few in there though, so might, another one might come up. A nice one. Alright. I don't get too close to the pool, so I don't spook them, but... This little deep pocket right here, if you guys can't tell from the video. A few good sized ones right near the bottom, but I'm kind of pressed for time now, so I don't really think I can switch off to get some heavier down to them. But so the pool's down there, so maybe I'll hit it up on the way back on. But now I think I'll leave this pool and head down to a couple of bigger ones downstream. All right. Little guy just came up for it. I'm gonna put more gink on here in a second. Let's just hit it.
And that may have been it for the pool, so I'll give it one more cast and then um, that lower one over there. Get out that cast. There we go. Try just above this pool here, real quick. So if that doesn't work, pan out, then I'll be coming on back. That's another brook trout. Oh, look at the salmon. Yep. Keep your hands wet. There you go, everybody. The salmon. And get him right back in the water. Give it a few more casts and then I'll be heading on back. All right, everybody, so that's a wrap for today's video. So if you like the content today, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe as well. Do highly appreciate that. And until always, tight lines. <laughs>